Sharp. Everybody and welcome along to the first ever Euro NASCAR eSports Series race in conjunction with iRA support from i-cin.com and supported also by Sim Racing League TV. We're here at the World Centre of Motorsport. The Daytona International Speedway will host this prologue event for the Euro NASCAR eSports Series. And well, what an entry list we've got for you for our first ever e-race. We're not able to race properly at the moment, but this is absolutely a great way to kick off the season for Euro NASCAR. An enormous field of drivers, so much so that over the course of what we're going to see here online, we are going to be splitting the order of the day into heat. Qualifying will be coming up very, very shortly. And the way that it will work is that the fastest qualifier in the qualifying session will take up pole position for heat number one. The second fastest out of the 50 plus drivers that are entered for this particular race, the second fastest of those will take up pole position for heat number two. And the third quickest driver will take up pole position for the third heat and so on. But then of course, that just gives us the grids for the heat. There will then be three heats of 10 minutes. The top 20 drivers of each of those will head through automatically to the main event. And if needs be, we'll have a consolation race as well to fill the grid full of 36 drivers that will head around this fantastic facility. It's the not the, the full speedway course that we're on, it's the road course that we're on. So it's a 3.56 mile or 5.279 kilometer circuit that takes in all of that 31 degree banking. So the cars will head round through speedway one and two and down the back straight, but through the back straight of the circuit, they'll flick initially left and then right and then right and then left again through the bus stop before they rejoin the 31 degree banking at speedway three and speedway four. So there's a fair chunk of the race that is on the infamous two and a half mile oval circuit. But of course, it's that intriguing and rather technical infield section. As we can see now, there is the number 90 car, Scott Jeffs, racing for Brax at the wheel of his Chevy, just working his way out of the East Horseshoe up towards turn number four, which is the kink. And then once he's gone through turn number four, the former Mini Challenge racer, Mini Challenge Challenge, be hard on the brakes and up towards the West Horseshoe as it is. We've got a raft of world-class drivers as well entered for this particular weekend or this particular uh, evening's race and also for the full season as well. When you look at who is out there, we've got the most successful Euro NASCAR driver ever. Andre Villarino is in the entry list to three times a champion. He'll line up on the grid. We've got the double former champion, Alon Day, the Israeli out there as well. Uh, and also lots of former Elite 2 champions as well, the likes of Stinis Longin, the reigning uh, Elite Pro, as it is nowadays, uh, the Euro NASCAR Pro Series category winner. Loris Hazemans uh, will be joining the grid as well, so there's plenty of drivers to talk about as the evening wears on. For the moment, though, in terms of qualifying, it is the American driver who raced with us last year in the Euro NASCAR series. Andre Castro that pops to the top of the time to 21-year-old for DF Racing with a one minute 44.927. Uh, and he is at the moment half a second quicker than anybody else. Circuit. All of the cars out there and qualifying together, albeit the way that the server is set up for them, it is a lone qualifying session as far as the drivers are concerned. A lone 10 minute session, all the cars on, on track together, but they can't interact and therefore interfere with each other, which also means they can't crash into each other as well, I suppose, in that respect. So they will be able to press on and try and get their ultimate lap. And that is exactly what, at the moment, number 83 is looking to do, which is Jakub Krafek, who is one of the guest cars that we've got in the field. He's the sports sales manager for Autodrome Most. So he's driving the OMV Max Motion NASCAR show Toyota. Uh, it's great to see him in the field. Renumbered car of Brian Krull's out there. Originally expecting to be running car number 391, but he's pitched up in car number 378 today. He's another one of the drivers that is uh, not a regular racer in the NASCAR Euro Series. He's one of the team members, usually engineering the number 91 Brax car. So he's brought the Ford out to have a go and has been particularly quick. And in fact, it's worth, just while I mention that, the way the numbering system works as well for this particular series and championship. And that is the easy way to identify the cars with their numbers. So if they're numbered 0 to 99, 
and those are in reality drivers that are part of the Euro NASCAR Pro category, previously called Elite One, rebadged as Euro NASCAR Pro for this year. Cars numbered 100 to 199 will be drivers from Euro NASCAR 2, and that is what was up until last year called Elite 2, but rebadged for this year, Euro NASCAR 2. Uh, cars that are numbered 200 to 299, well, that's Euro NASCAR Club Challenge drivers. That's the regularity test that was previously known as Elite Club until the rebadge over the winter. And car numbers 300 to 399 are Euro NASCAR team members and guests. So a real range of drivers and team members that will be out there. But for the moment, it is Alan Day now that has gone to the top of the times. The number 24 car swip, swapping over to PK Car Sport. Alan Day for this year has been running with Cal for a good number of years. Pops to the top of the times, the double former champion. Uh, with a 1 minute 44.904 mistake there by the look of things for car number 188. That was Max Lancer, former GT Italia racer, former bike racer as well, was a 39-year-old. So he has aborted that lap and will have another go. See the tail end of the car sliding around there as Giorgio Maggi applied the power. He was runner-up in Euro NASCAR 2 last year, missed out by just a shade from the uh, quick Scandinavian. Lassie Sorensen, who ultimately took the title, but Giorgio Maggi, the Swiss driver, looking to see what he might be able to do on this particular lap. Car number 18 running down in 18th position at the moment. 1.859 seconds to find. Nice and neat and tidy. Up towards the braking area for turn number one. Then through the slight little kink at turn number two onto the infield section of the road course here at Daytona. Using all of the kerb and not too much more. Then you need to move the car from the left to the right. Heavy on the brakes up towards the east horseshoe. See, looking to push as hard as he can. But I think, again, Giorgio Maggi probably aborted the lap there. Disappeared off the screen. So Alan Day fastest by 23 thousandths of a second on the ragged edge there. Heading up towards the braking area for the West Horseshoe. That was uh, Stefan Krasin again at the wheel of that uh, Hockenheim American Fan Fest car this time. He's a, another one of the guest drivers that we've got in the field. There'll be four different drivers sharing this car over the course of the season. And as we go on board, you can see just how steep the banking is. 31 degree banking really draws the attention as you sort of look out of the pillar box of the windscreen. And, well, Stefan Krasin looking to see what he might be able to do. Very experienced e-racer is Stefan Krasin. The 40-year-old onto the brakes in towards the left and right flicks at the first part of the bus stop. It flicks right, it flicks left again. The tail end of the car trying to come round, steals into it with a raft of opposite lock and that's sort of undone the hard work there really. So that will have cost him time and at the moment he is hovering around 30th position, isn't he? Which is going to put him uh, if we have the three heat format, which is what we're expecting with the entry list, that will put him sort of 10th on the grid in his particular heat, potentially. But still, more work to do. Still, time to do it as well. Albeit, he's just going to get over the start-finish line to get one more lap in. Because there's now less than 30 seconds to go in this qualifying session. And as a result, many of the drivers have headed towards pit road. So Alan Day fastest, Andre Castro second quickest, third quickest at the moment, uh, Bavo Fallon, what a fantastic lap that he managed to put in at the wheel of the 311 car from PK Car Sport, engineer with the team, not a regular racing driver, but at the moment he has out-qualified the reigning Euro NASCAR Pro Champion, Loris Hazemans, who is fourth quickest in this qualifying session. So that looks as though the rest of the cars just completing their qualifying and from there, they'll be split into their respective heats, ready for racing. Now, joining me in the commentary box for this one, we have a range of guests as well. But I'm going to bring in to start with at the very top of the evening. There's the results. We'll just guide you through the results. Qualifying results. Alan Day, quickest of all. Andre Castro, second quickest for DF1 Racing. Bavo Fallon was third quickest and completing the top four. Loris Hazemans. Ben Creener, the young Scotsman, there in fifth place. Head of Jeffrey Refent, who is there. In sixth position, Alex Sedgwick was seventh. Hello, Alexandro Brigatti, Eric Filgaris, and Brian Cruels, who rounds out the top ten. Vittorio Garelli was eleventh. Uh, Tobias uh, uh, Dannenhauer was there in twelfth place. Advert Dioda uh, is in thirteenth place, head of uh, uh, Marcel Lenertz, Ulysse Delso, uh, Mayan Kramers, and Simon Bellate completes the top 17. Uh, as we head further down through the order, Giorgio Maggi only 18th position for the runner-up in Euro NASCAR 2 last year. Henry Tuamala 
was there in 19th place. The reigning driver who claimed what was uh, previously called uh, the uh, club championship elite club, which is now called the club challenge, is 20th, which is Alain Mascron, head of Alex Fontana and uh, Stefano Gustavalle. Uh, Ruben Garcia, the multiple uh, Pinties champion, from uh, Mexico uh, is uh, just behind that. So cars already lining up on the grid for heat number one. I'm going to bring in the man who is the president of Euro NASCAR, Jerome Galpin, who joins me in the uh, virtual commentary box. Jerome, um, we can't go racing for real, but we're going to have some great racing, albeit virtually this evening. Absolutely. I think we will have a great race. Super fun to see our guys back on virtual track, <laughs> waiting for a I'm super happy the way uh, everybody, teams and drivers, uh, responded to the appeal and, uh, and enters this, uh, this iRacing Championship Esports Series. So we are super, super happy with that. And it should be a great show. I mean, it's been a, just your team. There's been a lot of hard work going to making this happen very, very quickly. As off they go on their, their rolling lap. We couldn't have done it without the likes of the support of iRacing and i-cin.com and Sim Racing League. And even TJ, uh, they're on board with this as well. They're going to make a, a titanium ring, as they do in, in, the, in the main series, for the series winner. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We, have, uh, we have great partners with that. I have to admit also that Gianluca, once again, did a fantastic job about that. It was, <laughs> I think, the night and days. But uh, of course, you know, our Willen partners, uh, General Tire, uh, TJ, and everybody is also aboard. So, so we are very happy to, to have this, to, to, to create some uh, on-track animation. Even if it's virtual, I'm sure the guys will have the, the same spirit and we will have a great race. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you, you, you were in, um, in, in the virtual race control in the driver's briefing earlier on where they were told what they needed to do. Um, they've got no damage bills, though, have they, Jerome, to worry about? Do you think it might be slightly more robust uh, virtual racing than real racing? I don't know. I just noticed that we had still the, the same questions regarding starting procedure and so on. So whether <laughs> I noticed that, uh, that uh, some drivers are late. Uh, there are questions that uh, they should have read. So it's, it's really, really uh, similar to real life. <laughs> so we'll find out very shortly because away we go it looks as though it's a good start from Alan Day as they head up towards turn number one onto the brakes Morris Hazemans briefly I think thought about having a look at the inside but the gap was always going to close and therefore the reigning Euro NASCAR Pro Champion slots himself behind the double champion the Monster Energy number 24 Chevy leading the race and I think everybody largely safely through the first corner didn't spot anything it's all rather close between the towel teammates further down through the order but Alan Day at the moment looking to try and sprint away in the lead of the race from Loris Hazemans Alex Sedgwick is there in third place but the battle that's going on through the order are quite robust and nose to tail in the early stages of, of this one on of a 105 there just heading around through shots that's the car that's in the hands of the Dutchman uh, Marijn Kramers Alex Sedgwick though has done a very good job who uh, I think uh, did a full season with us back in 2018 we didn't see much of him in the Euro NASCAR series in 2019 but he's a very experienced e-racer as well as Alex Sedgwick and he's up into third place going beautifully well there is a former uh, Euro NASCAR 2 champion Toma Ferrando a little bit further down through the order for so he's got uh, some work to do to thread his way through the order but the leading pair absolutely together these two battle wheel to wheel in the 2019 season proper and we're all in this virtual season that we're getting underway here Alan Day is at the moment just ahead of Loris Hazemans who's getting himself in the draft now as they head round through Speedway 3 and Speedway 4 looking to try and close the gap Half a second between the pair of them. Down in seventh place is Stefano Gustavalle, the Italian driver. There's Nave Taller, the, the second of two Israeli drivers that we've got in the field, the young teenager who did the full season with Solaris Motorsport in 2019. Looking to see whether he can squeeze his way through it ahead of Roy Hendricks, the team owner of Hendricks Motorsport, and he's through. Yeah, Nave Taller takes the place away. Herbert breaks that little bit too late and Roy Hendricks is instantly back through and retakes the position. Great stuff. So for the moment, uh, Jerome Galpin, who joins me in the virtual commentary box, of all neat and tidy, all for the moment, um, everybody behaving themselves. Yeah, exactly. They are, they are doing a good job. You have to know that most of them, you, most of them we are not uh, at all on a, on a racing in the last months, everybody jumped on uh, on computers and uh, and steering wheel and pads to to, to get in. <laughs> and we all know that i racing is a very challenging. It's really a proper simulation. So so we are very lucky to to, to have i racing uh, 
aboard and also you have to know that iRacing was built first for NASCAR so the NASCAR cars in iRacing are particularly particularly accurate and it's not a video game it's really difficult to drive so that's why you have some guts and, and what's it like for you returning to Daytona because of course you see um, cars in your championship um, do a race here albeit a demonstration race here at Daytona that was that was way back nearly 10 years ago now 2011 Exactly. Ten years ago, it was December uh, uh, 2011. We went there with uh, with 12 cars to compete in an endurance meeting, and it was a great, great memories for for all of us. We were, uh, I think, uh, 30 drivers, and racing on this track is really, really special. Uh, well, it's just caught out Max Lance. Uh, his Cal Racing 188 dropping through the order as a result of that. He's now down into. 14th position and has what lost the best part of 11 seconds to the car that was ahead of him uh, on the road Thomas Ferrando so there's uh, more work to be done there for the Italian to try and carve his way back down through the order at the front though Alan Day is continually can try to open up the back open up the gap as we go on board with Brian Cruel's fourth place car looking back at the car that sits there in fifth place which is Moraine Kramers the former FIA KZ2 Karting World Champion for 2019. Very, very successful in cars, as Malin Kramer has been. And at the moment, he's adapting to e-racing and the NASCARs around here, which is, it's the NASCAR Cup Series cars that we're running. Same fixed setup for every driver as well. Full damage modelling on as well. So unlike if you've watched the, the main uh, e-championship for the full Cup Series, the full NASCAR Cup Series, where they've got damage and resets available no resets available in this this evening so if you damage your car you're either out of the race or you've got to hobble round and i think that's probably why most of them are behaving themselves for the moment in the heat to make sure they get through into the main event as we go on board with finnish driver henry turmala on board the number 23 car henry was the uh euro nascar challenge champion as it was called for last year but remember that's been rebadged as the euro nascar club challenge for this year so he is the reigning champion on board with Marin Kramers still with Brian Cruels right behind him less than a quarter of a second behind this is the car in fourth position there you can see Brian Cruels right behind him beginning to close in again in the slipstream both of them managing to pull away also from uh, Stefano Gustavalle who sits there in sixth place and is just sort of dropping further and further back at this stage you can't do a great deal about it other drivers that, uh, or other people that join me in the virtual commentary box as well I want to, to bring him uh, Andre Weigal, who is uh, one of the drivers, if you uh, regularly tune into some of the German commentary footage uh, that we have, then uh, Andre is the guy that delivers the German commentary. And Andre, great to finally get some sort of season underway for, for Euro NASCAR. Yes, Nothing we've been waiting all day long for the series to start. We know we have the time without wheel racing right now, but. Right now we can start with the virtual championship and I think it's a very great idea. The drivers can stay at home, we can stay at home, enjoy some racing. So I really like the concept and the idea behind it. So yeah, I'm totally thrilled about this championship. I, I, I've been logging on, I don't know whether you have Andre or not, uh, onto the, the service for the practice sessions over the course of the last few days. And I, I think it's fair to say some of the drivers are pitching up this evening and having a go at it for the first time, but others, wow, they've turned some laps this week just in testing. Yes, uh, I was on some of the servers and drove by myself and it was really hard competition. I'm doing iRacing I think since five years and a lot of guys were already way faster than me. I'm very... It's very interesting how wheel drivers adopt to the simulation. They were not that fast in the beginning, but after two or three days they're already on pace. And we have a lot of guys like Alan Day and Loris Hazemans that are incredibly fast because they have a lot of experience in iRacing. They are great wheel race drivers. So this combination makes the success in this championship, I think. I, I think I, it's, it's like anything is the more you do of it, the better you become. And certainly Alan Day and Loris Hazemans and Alex Sedgwick all running first, second and third at the moment, put in hours on the various e-racing championships. And that's why they're running right towards the front. Good battle going on as Henry Tuamala looks to try and sneak up the inside of Advaik Dioda, but the Indian driver having none of it at this stage onto the brakes through turn number one. Looks as though Stefano Gustavalle runs a little bit wide ahead of them and he might lose two places here, Gustavalle. He just manages to rejoin the tarmac in between the pair of them. So Advent Yoda hangs on to what is, or gains uh, what is now sixth position. 
Stefano Gustavaye dropping down into seventh and Henry Tuamala unfortunately couldn't capitalise on it as we look back at him from Gustavaye's car up through the gears down the straight up towards the kink at turn number four as you try and use all of the curbs through that section and Andre Weigard would have driven one of these cars that virtually around this circuit just just talk us about from a driver's perspective Andre turn number four the kink that is one unbelievable corner on the on the road course Yes, the whole road course is very special with those cars. The cars have a lot of power, you have to be very careful on the throttle. We have to brake very early because the cars are very heavy. And this makes the whole challenge in this race. You have to find the right braking spots, you have to adjust your throttle and be very sensitive to the pedal. When you put a little bit too much throttle on it, you're going to lose the rear of the car and that's what makes it so special. It's a lot of power, It's a, there's a lot of uh, low speed corners, a lot of low speed turns, and it's very hard to control those cars on the on this track. Yeah. Uh, and that's exactly what we saw on the replay there. Thomas Ferrandu do, uh, do the uh, unfortunately the Ford went the wrong way round and uh, backed itself into the barriers. He's now headed down pit road. Has uh, Thomas Ferrandu? It looks like Justin Kuntz is in the pit lane as well. So uh, there's a few drivers that have already had problems in this one. So onto the brakes another lap about to be uh, started for the car of Brian Krulz who's now running a big game self right back onto terms again with Marijn Kramers at the wheel of the 105 car the Feed Vict racing car which is a new team that's going to be joining us when we get the uh, actual championship underway and it's great that we're going to have that team that is a, a combination of uh, the hugely uh, impressive Jack Villeneuve who raced with us all year last year in the Euro NASCAR uh, Pro Division the 1997 Formula One world champion former champ car champion Indy 500 winner as well but he's teamed up with uh, Patrick Lamare to form Feed Vict Racing so it's Feed Racing and Victory Motorsport combines now to not just for them to race but to bring through some exciting new talent and I think that's where I'll now bring in our another virtual commentator Gianluca uh, who is uh, uh, over there in Italy watching this race and is, is the man who's put so much work into this series. But the point I was making, uh, Gianluca, is that we continually see in the real championship more and more young talent coming through. And Feed Vict Racing have done exactly that again this year with their own little selection process to bring in new drivers like uh, Simon Pallate. Yeah, they have done an, an outstanding job an outstanding job and you see uh, many many new drivers uh, coming in and maybe this virtual championship could also be great to introduce new drivers to Euronescar and they immediately find themselves at ease on this, uh, on this kind of track uh, on this kind of cars and you know it's a great mix they make for a great mix uh, so there we go, checkered flag just falls Alan Day does grab the win he took the lead very early on indeed and held on to it all of the way. Despite Loris Hazeman's closing towards the end, there was not a great deal that the number 50 Hendrix Ford could do about it. So it's another win for Alon Day. And well, Gianluca, does that mean now he'll say that he's claimed 21 career victories? He was on 20 before tonight, but are we, are we, we're not counting e-race victories, are we, into their overall career, surely? Oh, no, we're not counting it races, <laughs> but, 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 but Alan, Alan there is a special one. There is a special one. His first win of 2020 in a NASCAR in in NASCAR on a, a Monster Energy car came in the virtual world on iRacing. <laughs> this is <laughs> absolutely uh, astonishing. Uh, it, I think Alan and, and Loris will will have uh, will give us some more uh, nice racing in the in the main race for sure I, I think they'll be right at the front of the main event later on so there we go that is the first of the heats concluded already we don't have to worry about the practicalities of real racing with the uh, rechecking the track for debris and bringing the the, the cars back to uh, the circuit those that have broken down back to pit road we just reset the server and and away we go again and that's a, that's another thing that i sort of want to mention now as well is that um, whether you're a, a driver or a team member or a media or a fan that's watching we're all missing motorsport currently and um, so uh, whilst we're not in a position to to race when we do get racing why not try and contact your local or national motorsport club or association and look at becoming a, a track marshal or, or corner worker because of course in the euro nascar esports series we don't need to worry about marshals we've got virtual ones that will count 
but you can contact your national association. I'll give you more details on that later on. Confirmation of the results then. Alan Day takes the win by 0.4 of a second from Loris Hazemans in second place with Alex Sedgwick completing the top three. Marin Kramers was fourth head of Brown Cruels and Advite Dioda completed the top six. Stefano Gusta Valle, Henry Tuamala, Navi Talo, and uh, oh, already it's disappeared. Uh, so that was the, the top ten we almost got through, but we are already on for heat number two. And it is going to be car number 122, Andre Castro, who has been doing great things already this 2020 year in e-racing. I've already seen him uh, been running right at the front in some of the other e-series races that we've got going on. And he's got, um, whilst still only a teenager, the youngest ever NASCAR wheeling Euro driver we've had alongside him, Ben Crean. Ben uh, cut his teeth in e-racing, so I'm not surprised to see that he has qualified towards the front for this heat. Alessandro Bugatti, Vittorio Gorelli uh, are there on row number two. Row number three sees car number 199 which is uh, Marcel Lennertz lined up alongside Simon Palate. That's another one of those quick drivers I said to watch out for the tracing for Feed Fit Racing this year. And away we go. Good start by Andre Castro as he heads over the start finish line. The drivers were told you maybe to overtake on the right uh, as the lights of the flag drops heading up towards turn number one. Running a little bit wide is Ben Creener, but then cuts back and is able to retake the place again over Alessandro Brigatti. So it's as they were really. Mike Kreener originally dropping from second down into third and that's a spin facing the wrong way is uh, Jakob Krafek at the wheel of the uh, Autodrome Moss supported car so he's tumbled his way down to the back of the order Alan Moscaron uh, looking to try and push on driver who as we say is stepping up to Euro NASCAR 2 this year having competed and won the championship in Euro NASCAR Club Challenge last year as we go on board with the Frenchman round through what is the right hand East Horseshoe he's got behind him now that behind him looks as though it's the multiple Mexican NASCAR champion that's behind him which is Ruben Garcia reigning remember Pinty's champion for this year and for last year as well uh, and in 15 as well 2015 he's also a former NASCAR stock V6 champion and uh, was also racing in the main E NASCAR race in Texas that was held uh, just a, a few weekends ago as well. So another driver that is proving that he's quick on the track and in the simulator as well. But Castro is already starting to, to open up a, a little bit of an advantage. Jerome Galpin still joins me in the virtual commentary box. Jerome, two race starts, two fairly clean starts. Hats off to the drivers. Yeah, really cool. I think they did a great job uh, ending the, the big machine on this. On this it's the first time when we have a uh, uh, drivers competing uh, Elite One, enfin, Euronascar Pro drivers, Euronascar Two, but also team members, special guests because we had a, we have seen good results in the previous race for uh, from MotoGP rider Kerr uh, Lequena uh, racing for on the Valencia car. So so it's a very good mix of, of drivers coming from uh, the super job. It is, yes, side by side from turns number two and turn number three. But Alessandro Gatti takes second place away from the number 33. Jevy in the hands of the Scotsman, Ben Crina. Ben Crina will be watching his mirrors as well, just making sure that closing in behind him, uh, not too quickly as Marcel Lennertz, but at the moment, the uh, driver who, again, is another one of these drivers that's come through the recruitment program and has uh, been to one of the recruitment days is showing a good hand here. I want to touch on that with Jerome Galpin again in a few moments if I can because at the moment this is a great fight for second, for third and for fourth position and I think all of those drivers second, third and fourth, Brigatti, Kreener and Lennertz, Jerome Galpin have all been part of the recruitment programme days have they not in the last few years? Absolutely, absolutely. We have new covers from this year but yeah, Andre, the young guy, Alex, they are all part of this programme and uh, uh, it brings more and more young drivers in the series and we see uh, uh, on real life track as well on virtual track that they are super good and that's how we built our future by bringing a uh, young driver in the series and uh, we are really impressed by uh, by their maturity uh, even if they are super young uh, I say it year on year on year the strength in depth for the championship teams to get better and better and better and I sincerely mean it when I say it every year and here I am again this year looking at the provisional entry list we have for the eSports series and for the actual championship and it's even stronger again. I don't know how you and your team do it, Jerome. I just, we are doing this all together. You know, our teams are doing a, a fantastic job too. And uh, uh, they are preparing cars. They are working with drivers to uh, increase the level. And you, you're fully right. Uh, year after year, it, it's 
never stop uh, growing. So, so it's not our effort, it's really a common effort. We have a lot of uh, input and ideas coming from drivers, from team, from partners, uh, track partners also are part of it. So it's not, a, it's not a, let's say, a, we just handle the series, but it's really a common effort from the, from the community. Uh, Simon, Simon Pilate gets spun around there and that I think was Vittorio Gorelli that he got together with yeah the Italian who was a front runner in the Euro NASCAR 2 championship last year has now got a bit more work to do let's just have another quick look at it on the replay out of turn number two up towards turn number three which is the horseshoe Pilate looks to try and squeeze through the inside the door closes and yeah unfortunately Vittorio Gorelli just gets spun around and that delayed a few cars behind him as well so there's more work to be done there. Ben Creamer is now looking to try and close in on Alessandro Pagatti for second position. Just 0.2 of a second between the pair of them. Out of Speedway 4, I think that is. No, it's not. It's out of Speedway 2, up towards the braking area for the bus stop. Two drivers left as they go through there will be Lake Lloyd, which is the, the lake that ultimately sits on the infield now here at uh, the... Daytona International Speedway because that's where they dug all the earth from to build the bankings around the circuit. It's worked. Yeah, Krina goes through. Ben Krina goes through and now heads up into second place. Alessandro Bragatti dropping down into third for the moment. And that's four laps now that they have ticked off in this session. Can Ben Krina continue to hang on to the places? Andre, you, you, uh, I'm going to bring Andre uh, back in again. You've seen a lot of iRacing. As you say, you've done a bit of NASCAR racing in, in iRacing as well. Um, some of these drivers brand new to it this evening Andre some of them on the entry list but not even here largely because they're still awaiting for some of their equipment to arrive at home so it's a good start isn't it and and this is what the prologue's about isn't it giving drivers the opportunity to get used to it yes right um, everybody is like a family right now I saw it in the last few, uh, few weeks that all the drivers they were together they were helping each other to get this series started and it was like I don't care about the team, I don't care what happened on the track before, everybody was helping each other to get this series where it is now. And we have so many talented drivers right now on the virtual track and for me it's just fantastic to see that the guys are working together without being in one team or something like this. But in the end, right now we see some excellent battles, we see some great fights on the track. So right now they're all switching to driver's mode where they all want to win. But before that, they were all friends and trying to get everybody involved. And that's what I really like. Uh, it is, yeah. I've got to say, Euro NASCAR is, is one big family. And of course, and then we're, we're part of that bigger NASCAR family as well. All getting very close further down through the infield. And that is Ruben Garcia managing to squeeze his way through to the red. So that's the reigning um, Pinty's Mexican NASCAR champion gaining the place over what is our reigning Euro NASCAR Club Challenge champion. So place gains there for Ruben Garcia, who has raced with some of these drivers before because um, uh, Gianluca, who is uh, still hovering around uh, the virtual commentary box as well, we, we did see as part of the driver exchange program in Valencia at uh, the start of 2018. Uh, Ruben Garcia Jr. came over and raced with us, didn't he? Yeah, uh, Ruben Garcia uh, took part in, in that exchange and now he, he was one of the first drivers to send us a message uh, Hey, can I join the series? <laughs> of course you can, man! <laughs> you're welcome, you're part of the family and it's great to see many, many NASCAR drivers coming from... Uh, oh, drivers in general coming from very different backgrounds to join us. We have MotoGP drivers, we and oh, and the surprises are not finished yet. You see, you see, in yeah, a week or so. I yeah, I, I've seen a few of the names and I know that I can't say them as yet, but I'm looking forward to yeah the, the next few rounds. And remember, this is a non-championship scoring round. Uh, they will be scoring points as we head towards the next round that will take place in just a week's time. So every week we'll be doing these. We'll be heading to Brands Hatch on the Indy car circuit there, on the Indy circuit for our first championship weekend of racing. Then it's over the Atlantic, virtually of course, to Watkins Glen before we then head back to Europe at Sandvoort back over to the States to race on Indianapolis in the road course. That's the regular season. Then we head towards the playoffs with the first of the playoffs, semi-final one being at Brands Hatch, but on the Grand Prix circuit when we revisit it. Then it's back to America, Charlotte and the Roval. Uh, remember, the playoffs will be double point scoring as well. And the finals for this year of the inaugural Euro NASCAR eSports series in conjunction with iRacing will be held at Circuit Solder. Uh, and uniquely, uh, Gianluca, I'm not sure 
whose idea this was or whether it's a collective idea, but this championship, this esports championship, I think quite uniquely with all the other ones that are out there, will carry points to the overall teams championship. So the winning driver of the esports series when we get towards the end of it will get 40 points towards the actual teams championship when we get the full 2020 season underway. So there was the start point. This championship, Euro NASCAR 2 Drivers Championship last year, but that was largely because he missed a couple of rounds. He swapped teams as well midway through the season, but um, certainly his, his pace at the beginning of the year, he, he could have claimed wins, wasn't to be in the end, but e-racing wise, he's putting that absolutely right here. Traffic to deal with, the traffic moves neatly out of the way. I think that was number 354, which is the team manager for Cal Racing who's come out to enjoy himself. That is uh, Luca Caniore, who uh, did a sensible thing there and got out of the way, allowed Andre Castro to blitz his way through and past. And Andre Castro is now about to head over the start-finish line and grab the chequered flag. So Andre Castro with a dominant win in heat number two. The American comes through to claim the win by eight and a half seconds in the end from Ben Kreena, who finishes in second position. Third place is going to be Alessandro Brigatti. Fourth is going to be Carnival 100 and 99 which is uh, Marcel Lenertz finishes in fourth place fifth place in the end is number 888 which is Ruben Garcia and sixth didn't really mention much about the car that was running in sixth place but worked his way up through the order that is a driver who we've seen racing previously in the likes of Formula 4 in Italy and in the Lotus Cup Italia that's Francesco Garisto who comes through to finish for 42 racing in sixth position seventh place was car number 100 and one and that is uh, Vladimir uh, Tzoidzis who finishes in seventh place Vittorio Gorelli in eighth place uh, Alain Muscron finishing in ninth position in the end as he dropped a little bit down through the order as the race wore on so that's heat two now done and dusted remember the top 10 from each of these heats will go through to the main event so there as we start to ready ourselves for heat number three this will be the final batch of drivers who will head towards heat number three. Confirmation of the results then. Andre Castro from Ben Crina, Alessandro Bugatti from uh, Marcel Lennertz, Ruben Garcia, Francesco Garisto, head of Vladimir Tzoidis and Vittorio Gorelli. Alan Muscaron finishes in ninth place and completing the top ten is uh, Jakob Krafik. So well done for uh, Jakob Krafik, the uh, sports sales manager for Autodrome Moss, bringing home the uh, MOV Max Motion NASCAR show Toyota as it was one of the few Toyotas we've got in the field to finish in 10th place. Simon Palate, therefore, will have to try and go for the consolation race, uh, as will uh, Ricardo Alita, Sven van Lara, and the Villarino finishing three laps down. He had problems. Alexander Graf, we saw briefly on the replay, the number 77 Memphis Chevy heading off and into the barriers, and Luca Caniore also with problems finishing four laps down. So heat number three coming up very, very shortly. This is the good thing about um, e-racing Jerome Galpin, is that it doesn't take long to hit the reset button and get another race underway. Yeah, that's definitely more easy than. <laughs> so, but, but uh, I'm super happy with the weather. The, the format is working, and I think uh, action, uh, short races, uh, yeah, it's a very good spot. And uh, having uh, seen a uh, Mexican champion like Ruben Garcia, but uh, our guys uh, and uh, and our friend from Most uh, is super exciting. I, I think it's great the way you've brought different people in together, and uh, I think in. Uh, in some of the races yeah we've got people representing representing teams we've got people representing circuits uh, we've got uh, engineers in here we've got team managers in here we've even got pr people in here as well so it's a real mixture isn't it, that we've got yeah and uh, it's definitely more easy and less expensive to 
<laughs> in every thing that than in real life because some of those guys are well, but <laughs> wouldn't borrow them by car in, in, in real life. There, there is a downside for you though, Jerome. The parts van isn't quite as busy. Here we go, we go green again. And it is uh, Babo Fallon that uh, is in the lead, heading up towards turn number one for the first time. Babo is crew chief for the number seven car in Hendrix Motorsport. We have done some car racing in the past with Babo, but he ran a little bit wide there, I feel. Contact further back, it all gets rather marginal, and, but I think everybody just manages to hang on to it. But it is going to be Jeffrey Ruthern who is the crew chief for Hendrix that leads the race. One driver that qualified much further down than I thought was um, Stinis Longine, who at the wheel of the number 11 car is working his way through the order. But up to second is Florida resident Eric Filgueres, another driver who we have seen competing with us on a few occasions uh, where he raced for uh, Michu Motors in the 2019 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series at the moment. He is sitting right behind the race leader and not that far ahead of car number 311, which is Babo Fallon uh, for PK Carsport. His Chevy sitting there in third place. So it's Ford from Chevy from Chevy. There is Davide Delara, another one of the drivers in the field further down through the order, looking to try and work his way up. Giorgio Maggi, the runner up in the NASCAR 2 Drivers' Championship last year. He's running further down through the order than he would wish, down in ninth position. Remember, it's only the top ten that are guaranteed to get through. And uh, on the bubble, running in tenth place at the moment, you just saw it, is the number 79 car. That's the Hockenheim American Fan Fest car, which again, I'm going to bring Andre in again because uh, he probably knows a little bit more about uh, Stefan Kazim than, than I do. But he's one of four drivers, uh, Andre, that's going to be driving this car over the course of the season. He's done a bit of e-racing in the past. And, He's been a huge fan and supporter of Hockenheim and uh, is the man who's been given the drive for this this event. Yes, right. Um, this Hockenheim car is a wild card car and we see four different drivers in there. And Stefan Kazin is a 40-year-old German sim racer. He's a big fan of NASCAR, the NASCAR Win Hero Series, like you said, and also a big fan of NASCAR in general. And he's doing sim racing now for several years. He's very experienced and he's at home at the, on the ovals in iRacing. And he knows those cars are very well, so let's see what he's going to do in this race. He's surely not the fastest in this split, but maybe he can go into the top 10 and advance to the main race. We will see. That is uh, one of those um, yeah, sitting ducks we have to take a look at. Uh, off the circuit, that's Scott Jeffs all over the circuit at turn number four at the kink in the distance. So that will see the number 90 car, as you can see on your screen, dropping down through the order there. Can he rejoin the circuit and remain in the Etta? I think he might have done, you know. So that's a, a slight mistake. That kink at turn number four is so easy to get caught out. Davide Lara looking to try and close in on Stinis Longin, the number 11 car. He was runner up in the NASCAR, uh, the Euro NASCAR Pro category last year. He's coming under pressure from Davide Pilara though. Uh, Stinis Longjean, former Elite 2 champion, now called of course Euro NASCAR 2 for this year, is coming under pressure. Davide Pilara jinks out of the slipstream. Is he close enough? Not quite when they get to the bus stop, so we'll still follow him round. Great battle for 7th and 8th position, and they're battling so hard that it's sort of backing up the cars that sit behind as well, because Giorgio Maggi is not too far away, uh, but dropping off the back of them now. What's the car that was doing so, so well in the early stages? And that is uh, Stefan Cuisin. Out front, no. It is still 307. That's the Hendrix Motorsport Ford of Jeffrey Ruthern that continues to lead the race. Eric Filgaras coming under more and more pressure all of the time from Bavo Fallon, who we ride on board with. Looking back at the car of Ulis Delso that sits behind. Ulis Delso, of course, another former champion in Euro NASCAR 2. He was the champion in 2018, stepped up to Euro NASCAR Pro for 2019 and announced he'd be doing both in 2020. So he's going to be a, a very, very busy chap doing the E-Series and as when we get full racing underway, both Euro NASCAR 2 and Euro NASCAR Pro. Busy chap. Here is Scott Jeffs. Oh, he had a spin on the previous lap at, tur at turn number four. He's had a spin at turn number three this time, which is the East Horseshoe. Just got the power on a bit too soon, coming out of the, the right hander and the tail end of his Brax racing machine. Instantly told him that enough was enough. So lap number three we are on at the moment. Nose to tail, fighting over what is seventh and eighth position. 
Giorgio Maggi makes a bit of a mistake though that time heading out of what is turn number seven and that has instantly allowed uh, Davide Dallara to go through and grab the place away so Maggi now down into eighth position at this stage so what can he do to try and close back up again at this stage he's got a gap still not much of a gap though behind him and he's starting to come under pressure a little bit more from Stefan Krasin there goes Stinus Longin heading in towards the braking area for the bus stop chicane the Belgian driver they became a father last year claimed his first win in the Euro NASCAR Pro division last year he is second in the overall wins table in what is Euro NASCAR 2 but it took him a while from stepping up from NASCAR 2 to NASCAR Pro to claim his win and he did that at his home circuit at the very last racing weekend of 2019 and that provided in itself some fantastic scenes to cap the season off here is our race leader at this stage Jeffrey Rathurn going beautifully well the Hendricks crew chief say has done some kart racing in the past but not a great deal of car racing but for the moment one and a half seconds to the good let's have a look at what happened here kind of a 289 is Igor Romanov up towards the kink loses the tail end of the not only motorsport Chevy and hard into the wall there was already front end damage on that car as well so we'd already had a previous off by the look of things driver who'll be competing in the club challenge for 2020 another one of those drivers as we were talking about with Jerome Galpin earlier on that came through the recruitment program so four laps done I'm going to bring in Gianluca again for this one David Delara has gone off as well so David Delara fighting away well that has dropped him out of automatic qualification by the look of things because he was in a position that would have allowed him to have qualified automatically break really late tried to go all the way around the outside of Romain Iniesta and well, ran out of room I'm afraid that's dropped him now down through the order so Gianluca I just want to bring uh, uh, Gianluca uh, back in again uh, we've been talking about the response that we've had from from these drivers for the Euro NASCAR eSports series in conjunction with iRacing supported by uh, i-sim.com and Sim Racing League TV but the actual main championship when we get it up and running record entries for this year no less than 33 man i apologize for earlier because i my connection let me down i'm sorry um yeah way way uh, many many uh, entries for the real uh, real life season 33 cars 66 drivers it's gonna be huge just huge <laughs> it's going to be amazing as and when we get it underway at the moment subject to, to else going on there but uh, at the moment it should be most in the Czech Republic in June but of course everything uh, as we all know is is slightly open to um, to variation at the moment but we will hopefully get some racing done and we will as soon as we can we'll, we'll cram them all in if needs be uh, Ulysse Del So now well Ulysse Del So has kept his nose rather clean in this one up to third place right behind him is car number 150 which is Tobias Dohenhauer who uh, is going to be racing in Euro NASCAR 2 this year. Another driver that's been through the recruitment program. There's just so many drivers that have done the recruitment, been accepted to go on to one of the recruitment pro recruitment program days, which is a sort of a, a test day that gives you the experience to drive one of these cars and have been there and done it and loved it so much that they, that they sign up. So he's another one of those, so many of them in the eSports series field this weekend. Alex Fontana is running in sixth position now, kind of a 342 Alex Fontana is a test driver for 42 racing but of course he's got a huge amount of experience himself and he got as high as uh, GP3 and Formula Renault 3.5 World Series by Renault in single seater career that he had and is now running in sixth position Stinus Longjean still looking to see what he might be able to do to put Romain in Ieta under pressure these two raced wheel to wheel plenty of times in the 2019 season out of the bus stop up towards speedway three steam is a little bit slower out of the bus stop there and that's a such a critical part of the circuit uh, because you come out of the bus stop slowly it compromises your run of speed all the way through speedway three speedway four over the start finish line and all the way back down to conclude the lap so of all of the corners uh, I'm going to bring uh, Andre back in again here. The, the exit of, of the bus stop up towards Speedway 3 is probably one of the most critical, Andre, I would guess. 
Yes, of course. Your I was coming in with the th second gear, and you want to tr hit the throttle, of course, to get onto speed. But you have to be very careful because when you join the banking, it's very hard to control the car, and this is a critical point. You have to really adjust your throttle and be very careful on the gas. And so, yeah, it's a very critical point on that. But we see that many drivers here are very careful. They are very calm on the throttle we see not that much spinning i would guess we would see and on the on the top we see jeffrey rufen he's wow very very good right now i think he's going to win this race because eric figueras is a few seconds back in second so if he's doing his job well like the last laps i think we see the next winner and when we saw the other heats this will be a tremendous fight on the it's top good. of this main race yeah, the main event's going to be absolutely staggering. White flag is out. So Jeffrey Rufin is going to come through and grab a victory in heat number three of the inaugural Euro NASCAR eSports Series race in conjunction with iRacing here at Daytona International Speedway. It's very much been, well, not quite a lights to flag victory because it was about maybe 100 metres that he wasn't leading for as the lights went out. But after that, there was no looking back. Eric Filgaras comes through and finishes in second place. Ulysse Del So finishes in third place. And Tobias Ballenhauer will complete the top four. Bavo Fallon went well considering he's just a team member but going beautifully well at the wheel i do like the livery on uh, that car he finishes in fifth position alex fontana in sixth place giorgio maggi in seventh we do see automatic qualification for stefan cuisine as well at the wheel of the hockenheim fan fest car and he'll be very pleased indeed with that uh, uh, spinning the wheels up in celebration remain in the at number 32 and Stinus Longin are the last of the automatic qualif qualifiers. So Sebastian Bleekemol and Davide Derara, Scott Jeffs, Ariana Cassoli, uh, car number 102, which is Alessio Bacci, uh, misses out. And also car number, there goes uh, Ariana Cassoli over the start finish line now. And also missing out is car number 289, which is Igor Romanov, but we saw him have his problems and went off into the barrier. So a few of the cars that I thought might automatically qualify haven't. Uh, but the vast majority that I thought would be there or thereabouts would be. Here comes Alessio Bacci now over the start-finish line. One of the few Toyotas we've got in the field. Through he goes and grabs the chequered flag. Another driver that we saw racing in the Euro NASCAR Club Challenge for last year. Well, that's the three heats now concluded. Well, that means that the format now moves on to the consolation race. Just confirmation of the results. So... Rafin takes the win ahead of Phil Garas from Del So and Dawan Hauer. Bavo Fallon and Alex Fontana complete the top six. Giorgio Maggi, Stefan Krizin, Romain Inietta and Stinis Longin completes the top ten. Missing out on automatic qualification, Sebastian Bleeky Molen, Davide Delara, Scott Jeffs, Ariana Casoli, uh, Alessio Bacci. And then at the very bottom of that list is Igor Romanov. So that gives you the order of the 16 cars that finish the top 10 go through automatically so that now means that we've already got for the main events the top 10 in heat one the top 10 in heat two and the top 10 in heat three through so that's 30 drivers on the grid for the main event but we now move on to the consolation race this is another 10 minute race the main event will be 30 minutes i don't think i've mentioned that to you as yet but this will be another 10 minute race only the top six from this will advance to take up the final six spots on the grid so racing's been fairly clean jerome galpin for the starts of the of the heats i think drivers just treading carefully seeing what they can do but now it's sort of a last chance saloon for these guys isn't it yeah this one should be the survival race you know when you have the last chance to qualify it's now it's now of the home so so i think it will be a bit uh, aggressive and we can notice that uh, the uh, hendrix motorsport is, is uh, is uh, leading the pack so that will be interesting to see if uh, he can uh, beat some of his drivers yeah absolutely yeah good point well made yeah the team manager for hendrix makes sport roy hendrix sitting there on pole position simon palate sitting alongside row two of the grid is sebastian bleaky molen and alongside him that looks like it's uh, luigi ferrara that sits there the third row of the grid uh, that was uh, Ricardo Alita, I think, who's the team photographer for not only motorsports, that lined up alongside the sister car, uh, which uh, can't quite spot the number of them. It's 289, so it must be uh, um, Igor Romanov that's there 
and thereafter as the cars head down there difficult to spot uh, exactly which one's which one of the big cars that to watch out for in this one is uh, on the fifth row of the grid car number 22 with uh, white nose yellow tail end two uh, three times champion the most successful driver in euro nascar and the villarino number 22 watch out for him watch out for number 27 as well which is Thomas ferrando and uh, number 99 just in coops all didn't have great first season already this contract simon palate is spun around and is uh, facing the wrong way and the villarino gets tagged as well the scott jeff spins in avoidance of everybody uh, and as i thought um, the consolator race might perhaps have a few more thrills and spills not to say that the heat haven't been exciting but yeah a few drivers getting caught out and it's going to be i think luigi ferreira that is side by side with roy Hendricks. they bounce off each other they both take each other out heading down and out of turn number three and up towards the kink so that's both of the drivers that were fighting for the lead are uh, now having to carve their way back through the order and Sebastian Bleaky Molin, who had qualified, was he something like 14th, is now up into second place, largely because he's kept his nose clean. And Justin Kuntz, who was off the back of the grid, is now ahead of Bleaky Molin and up into second. An amazing first few laps, uh, or first few corners, I ought to say, uh, of the race. Justin Kuntz making a slight mistake heading out of turn six and turn seven. That puts Bleaky Molin back ahead of him again. But uh, Andre. Rather frantic first few laps, but what a first few corners from Justin Coots picking his way through the traffic. The number 99 was up to second, he's back down to third. Yes, right, and this is one of the keys of success. Sometimes you don't have to be aggressive, you just have to wait for other people to ruin their own races. And Justin just did a great job. To get out of the way, don't be involved in the chaos, and just picking up positions by passing wrecked cars. In iRacing, a lot of guys know that this is a to success in many, many races. Oh no, and poor old Luigi Ferreira and Roy Hendrick come together for a second time. I think maybe Scott Jeffs was involved in there somewhere making the initial contract with Roy Hendrick who hit the wall at uh, Speedway 3, bounced back into the path of Luigi Ferreira and two cars that were fighting for the lead of the race at turn number three. Now are two incidents in, and both rather battered. And there's problem, that's Sven Van Lara who's got together. Um, Scott Jeffs was involved again. We only saw the tail end of that, but I'm sure we might get a replay as to what went on. But Sven van Lara, I think, was the car that spun around. I'm sure his was the grey car, such is the entry list. I'm trying to remember the ball. Yes, it is. Yes, Sven van Lara is the grey car. Uh, right, lots of damaged cars, lots of smoke on circuit. Luigi Ferreira still continuing around the track. There goes Roy Hendricks in his battered car, who now running in 14th position. Here's a quick replay. What happened? Well, he already was going very slow, Sven van Lade. He pulled down to the inside. I think the incident had already happened there. So, yeah, he'd already had the initial contract. And now Justin Kuntz slithers off the circuit. He makes a mistake. Sebastian Bleekin Molen goes through. Max Lancer goes through. Igor Romanov goes through. And Justin Kuntz, all of that hard work to carve his way up through the order and into second place, all undone in a split second as he heads back down now into fifth position at the wheel of the number 99 df1 racing chevy let's have a quick look what's this this is right okay this is roy hendrix yes yeah, so scott jeffs gets a little bit sideways makes contract with roy hendrix roy hendrix hits the wall and then bounces back into luigi ferreira and as i say those two had already come together when they were fighting for the lead of the race uh, so how frantic is that so at the moment uh, davide delara uh, a 12 and a half second lead from Justin Coots, who has managed to get himself back up into second. Last time we looked, he slithered off the track and was down into fifth position, but a stunning lap again from Justin Coots sees him in second place. So 12.9 seconds. Remember, it's a 10-lap race with three laps in. Could be worth just keeping an eye on that lap, because uh, that, that gap, because the way that Justin Coots has worked his way through the order, he really has done beautifully well, and that's despite a, a grassy moment a few moments ago. Simon Palate, remember, he's in third place. He was facing backwards at turn number one. Uh, is now running in third place, head of Sebastian Bleaky Molen. He got Roman on it. Scott Jeffs, who seems to have been involved in lots, is running a superb sixth at the moment. I, I told you it would be a car. It would be a make or break. <laughs> yeah, certainly has, uh, Jerome. He has. Uh, worked his way through the order beautifully beautifully well we, we did say oh no there we go again look sebastian bleaky molen facing the wrong way at the bus stop collected by igor romanov not quite sure what happened there because i think sebastian bleaky molen made contact with somebody else we did say jerome we thought this one might have a little bit more contact and i think we were both right 
we knew what was Absol coming. Absolutely, I told you. It's, it was, when we think about, uh, we thought about this format, be a, a make or break and a survival race, and obviously they are they are having a lot of fun together. So <laughs> it's pretty entertaining. And, well, and I have the message. I received the message from race control that drivers are okay. Drivers are okay. Thank you. Yes, yes. That's, that's the one good thing about e-racing. We never need to worry about it. Therefore, we can take it more lightheartedly when they bounce off each other. Uh, the other good thing is they don't have big repair bills, do they? As I was saying, your, your parts truck will be a little quieter at the end of this race meeting yeah, than the yeah. regular one. Yeah, but the, the, the very cool thing is nobody will come back and complain about something that happened. <laughs> that will, uh, that will be fine for me. Let, let's hope not. Um, David Lara is doing a great job. The gap I thought would come down at the moment. It's gone out. It's now at 13 and a half seconds between himself and Justin Kuntz, who has got, what, two and a half seconds in hand between himself and Simon Palate. We're looking at the moment at Toma Ferrando, who is not at the moment in a position that's going to see him through to the main race. Remember, it's only the top six in this one that go through, subject to any penalties that race control might apply because they do have the possibility it's not just eye racing penalties there are other penalties that race control can apply because we do have live race control working on this and they can range from anything from a drive-through penalty to a stop and go penalty or a stop go penalty with 10 seconds pause between them even to dropping to the back of the grid for the main race as well they're the four different penalties that are aside of the regular eye racing penalties that are available for race control to deploy at this stage here is our third place car car number 106 simon palette doing a great job he was the semi-finalist in the feedvict racing's 2019 selection process the 18 year old belgium who celebrated that well literally his 18th birthday only about three weeks ago i think uh, doing beautifully well in this one number 77 alexander graf with missing front and rear body work still looking to try and thread his way through the order he's now up into eighth position the Swedish driver at the wheel of the Memphis Racing Chevy, multiple Swedish V8 champion. Memphis Racing ran two cars in the 2019 main championship season. They announced earlier on they would drop to just one car for the 2020 season as and when we get it underway. It's not been an ideal first night for the quick Swede. The damage to the car might mean that he's better through some parts of the circuit than Max Lancer, but in a straight line uh, because the damage model is fully on for these cars. It does affect them. You can see that Max Lancer was just able to sail his way through and pass. And that's something I just want to pick up with Andre again, because you're familiar with these cars and the damage modeling as Alexander Graf makes another mistake at the bus stop. Once you've picked up that, uh, that damage, Andre, um, it, it, as we saw from Alexander Graf, might be quicker through the infield section, but come the straights, um, the aerodynamic effect of that damage take effect and Max Lancer just breezed his way through. Yes, right. Every contact you have in iRacing will have an effect on the car. You will definitely feel it in the wheel. You will see it on the top speed and also in the handling. And yeah, the damage model is very accurate. It looks sometimes a little bit uh, too unrealistic, but the feeling is very, very realistic. And you also have to manage something like when you hit the front of the car on the barrier or with another car, you have radiator cooling problems or something like this that might your engine could blow up so you have to check the instruments if the temperatures are right and something like this so there are a lot of things simulated in this iRacing simulation and you have to be very very careful with your car Simon Balate we just saw having a little bit of contact there with the number 99 car of Justin Kuntz Kuntz got away with it but poor old Simon Palate who was running right at the sharp end has now dropped to sixth position and remember it's only the top six that go through and Simone Pilate has got right behind him at this stage Ricardo Alita so we can't afford to lose any more places as we go on board in fifth place now with Scott Jeffs the number 90 Brax racing machine in the hands of the British driver up the inside of the hugely experienced Sebastian Bleaky Molan and takes the place away from the number 69 car so the team Bleaky Molan car in the hands of the 41 year old Dutchman loses the position we did see sebastian and his father of course michael racing the full championship season in 2019 sebastian finished 16th in the elite pro championship but was also dovetailing that with the european renault clio championship in which he finished runner-up so he's a multiple uh, renault and particular clio champion here comes ricardo alita looking to try and hold back the advances of max lancer he really needs to because at the moment neither of these two are going to quite make it through to the main race 
So that means that Lancer is now up into seventh. The leader is down in, into eighth. And how far up the road is Simon Palate? Well, he's now moved seven seconds up the road from them. So he was almost under pressure, but is now able to uh, regather his thoughts and work his way back up through the order. So despite the squabble these two are having, it's not going to be good enough for them to work their way through to the main event. Davide De Lara, though, a dominant victory potentially coming up. He is on his last lap of the race. He's got almost a 17-second advantage between himself and Justin Kuntz, who's had a busy old race, Justin Kuntz, from the back of the grid. Despite the damage, Igor Romanov's going well as well, isn't he? He's there in third position at the wheel of the Not Only Motorsport car. So another driver that's going to be joining us for the 2020 NASCAR Euro Series Club Challenge, but Davide De Lara is through the bus stop for the final time, heading up towards what will be turn number 12 or Speedway 3 here at Daytona International Speedway on the road course. And that will wrap up our penultimate race of the night, the consolation race, which is going to see him head round through Speedway 4 over the start finish line. And it's going to be a win and through to the main event for Davide De Lara. He goes through and grabs the victory. Justin Kuntz uh, really was in last chance saloon, almost starting off the back of the grid for this one. Was up to, what, second uh, by five or six corners in, then got involved in an incident and dropped down through the order. Uh, hasn't had a clean race because there's been a few other sort of bumps into other drivers. Um, no blame apportioned either way, but he does come through to finish in second place. Igor Romanov will finish in third place and make it through to the uh, main event, as will Scott Jeffs, who finishes in fourth position, car number 90 there at the wheel of his Chevy. Sebastian Bleaky Molens, Ford number 69, finishes in fifth position. And Simon Pilate finishes in sixth place, so subject to any penalties that might be applied, he will be going off the back of the grid for our 36 car final. So the rest of the cars just heading over the start finish line. Uh, Gianluca still joins me in the virtual commentary box. Gianluca, full of action that one, but now we've got the longer the 36 car grid the 30 minute race to wrap up this prologue event now it gets really serious and you see uh, the drivers drivers um, out uh, uh, out out since they qualified they did a heat race and they're waiting waiting and the track is evolving in the meantime so it will be it will not be easy for the guys who qualified in the first heat to be on track now the conditions are slightly different well, we're gonna we're gonna get ready. And, and that's the great popcorns. <laughs> that's the great thing about iRacing, the track dynamics, because the circuit will rubber up. So confirmation and Davide De Lara claims the win. Justin Coots in second place and Igor Romanov in third, ahead of Scott Jeffs, Sebastian Bleaky Molen and Sim uh, Simone Pilate. Ricardo Alita just missed out on making it through, as did Max Lancer, who finished in eighth position. Alexander Graf and Roy Hendricks, Ariana Casali, Toma Ferrando, uh, Yevgen uh, Sokolovsky. Finishing in 13th place, uh, Luigi Ferreira in 14th, uh, Alessio Bacci in 15th, Luca Caniore in 16th, and Sven Lan Van Lara, we saw him with his damaged uh, Brax Chevy on the start-finish line, another driver that did not make it through. So, uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the consolation results, uh, we'll see those drivers head through and we'll make it through but there's some some big names that, that didn't make it through uh, and the Villarino stands out as one of those that uh, that didn't make it through and i would argue luigi ferrera and certainly Tomo ferrando as well so there's a, some quick quick drivers in that one uh, gianluca that that didn't make it through unlucky for them this weekend next weekend championship points are up for grabs yep and we're gonna go uh right stretch okay you know the track very well <laughs> and um it would be um same format on the in, in the circuit, which is going to be checked it out. By the way, I was looking at our YouTube screen, and you know, our drivers spend time there waiting for their main race by commenting on YouTube. Is that what they've been doing? <laughs> yep. Right. Um, I hope the microphone's still working, I think I just have an issue with it. Apologies. Um, but hopefully, you'll still. Mark, we lost you, buddy. Hopefully you can 
Now I want to play around how to sleep. Let's do smart tank, I'm back to do this. Is it you, Michael? Keep playing. Hopefully you can now hear me. Am I back? Excellent, right, so apologies ladies and gentlemen. Slight technical issue there, but with the spare microphone, which hopefully will allow to get through. Order. Big spin there also, and that is uh, Alessandro Brigatti that's had a spin and is facing the wrong at the East Horseshoe. The one that's more contact further back as well. Oh dear, right, okay, it's all going rather wrong. Sebastian Bleakimol made further contact with, I think that was Vittorio Garelli, but it's going to be Alan Day and Andre Castro that have avoided all of the chaos at the front. They are leading. Hopefully we'll get back, back on track soon. Lots of action in this first uh, few, in this first lap. You can see that guys, uh, they are pushing hard. If you know this circuit well, he will be one of the drivers that's raced around this this configuration circuit for real as well. He's running in fifth. So Morris Hazeman's still now looking to try and in fact has already third position away. So that is place gained for Hazeman's, place lost for Jeffrey Ruthen who drops down into fourth position, but look at the queue of cars that sit behind, ready to take further places away. Uh, Eric Filgueras is right with him. Number 33, Ben Kreener, is looking to try and go side by side with Eric Filgueras as they head round through the East Horseshoe. Filgueras gets a little bit sideways on the way out. That doesn't compromise his exit speed too much, so it doesn't hand an opportunity really for Ben Kreener. Down the straight and up towards the kink at turn number four, they'll go. Not that far behind them as well is uh, the number 105 car which is uh, Marain Kramers Marain Kramers is able to dive through and take the place away from Ben Kramers Kramers is looking to attack the car ahead lost out to the car behind now there is Alex Sedgwick we haven't seen big amounts of him uh, throughout this main race to start with he's busy having a battle at the moment with the former Euro NASCAR 2 champion from a couple of seasons ago Yulis Del So they're fighting away for seventh and uh, sorry, eighth and ninth positions. As we now concentrate our efforts on the fight for third again. Hazeman's under pressure coming up towards the bus stop. Good replay of Davide De Lara. Now I think that's not quite going to show the replay that we're after. So we'll head back towards the action that's going on on track. Pick up on that great little fight that was going on for third and fourth positions. Here is the battle for the lead of the race. Alan Day and Andre Castro at it again at the pair of them. Alan Day already having claimed the win in his heat. Andre Castro took a dominant win in his heat. And well, Andre, not surprising that uh, early stages of what is a 30 minute race, remember, for this one, that these two are at it and half a second between them. Pulling away at the moment for Loris Hazemans, but he was busy, wasn't he? Trying to work his way up into third place. Now he's done it. Can he close on the pair ahead? Yeah, I think so. Loris Hazemans is. Uh, quite one of the fastest drivers on the grid, but Alan Day and Andre Kassel, we saw it already in the heat. Those guys are incredibly fast. We saw it already on the guest races with the NASCAR Williams Euro Series stars in the last weeks that Alan Day is, wow, just a rocket in iRacing. And also Andre Kassel, we see he's closing in. He's coming closer to the back of Alan Day, and I think he's going to try to attack him soon because Getting way on front is way more confident than just following the leading car. What a shame for Marain Kramers. Did all of the hard work of gaining place and then having got through and gaining a position just applied a bit too much throttle coming out of the East Horseshoe. It was enough for the tail end of the Feedvik racing machine to spin its way around. But say a driver who is going to be a very welcome addition 
uh, in the 2020 full championship season so he was hugely successful in karts and is the reigning uh, FIA KZ world karting champion we dive on board with Andre Castro you're absolutely right Andre uh, the uh, gap between first and second is as close as it's been over the course of the last few, few laps Loris Hazeman still not really making an impression onto them he's still two and a half seconds back from the leader at this stage and about two seconds back from the car that we ride on board with and that's largely because Loris Hazeman I don't think can shake off Jeffrey Rufin's tensions at this stage so he's still in third place but still coming under pressure for it is the difficulty onto the brakes uh, back off the front stretch and towards turn one again so the infield section of this road course come the leading pair of cars 0.5 of a second between Alan Day and Andre Castro. Loris Hazeman still sitting there in third place. You can see in the distance, but Rufin is still right behind him in fourth place. Ben Kreener uh, a little bit on his own now in the fifth position. There, Eric Vulgaris completing the top three. But the battle for third and fourth is raging. I think this is why at this stage Hazeman is falling away from the lead pair rather than catching them. It's because he's being kept very, very honest for third position. Nice and neat and tidy further down through the order Advite Diodar's having a good little battle this is the 13th and 14th position the uh, London based Indian driver right up onto the coattails of Babo Fallon one of the engineers for PK Car Sport but for the moment Advite Diodar can't work his way through trying to finish fourth in Euro NASCAR 2 last year did Advite Diodar another quick replay that we're going to see and this is Romain Inieta heading up towards turn number one big spin going into turn number one and hits the end of the the pit wall he's not the only person ever to have done that on the Daytona road course that is absolutely for sure so Jeffrey Rufin still sitting there in fourth position at this stage and looking to see whether he can hang on to the coattails of the reigning Euro NASCAR Pro Champion. Now, Jerome Galpin, who uh, still joins us in the commentary box, and that, the man behind the uh, this series, and of course that the series thrill, hugely impressed, I've got to say, with some of our drivers that are running in the, the number 300 cars, so i.e. the Euro NASCAR team members and guests, some of them are very, very quick, and very consistent. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and uh, we were talking about that at the beginning of the program, but we are really a big family and having of, of the main uh, concept also of, of this uh, virtual series because they are a big part uh, of our real life racing, but they are behind the scene, so it's really cool to be able to have those guys. And, and, it's, and it's wonderful to see that they can they can you know, rub shoulders with with the best that we have on on real race tracks and and, and and keeping it fairly clean and consistent as well I think that's what's in, impressed me the consistency of some of the laps and how hard they're they're pushing say the likes of the reigning uh euro nascar pro champion loris hazeman yeah yeah maybe easy <laughs> they will have some nicer <laughs> in the shops and the pit boxes uh, later on, later this year when you come back to relax if you can't do it by the way I can do it myself too so well, I think it could be fun if I were Babo Fallon I'll be knocking on Anthony Kumpen's door in the morning and if I were Jeffrey Bruford mm -hmm. knocking on Roy Hendrick's door and saying look forget me being one of the engineers anymore I want to get in the cockpit please <laughs> here we go look at how close this is Loris Hazemans just cannot pull away from Jeffrey Rufin this has been a great battle all the way through and now Rufin is as close as he's been all race so far absolutely together he's going to get a tow as they come round through turn number 12 this is Speedway 3 this is the fight for third and fourth position but at the moment it is still just the reigning Euro NASCAR pro champion that is ahead of the crew chief for the number 7 Hendricks car in real life over the start finish line onto the brakes very difficult as you transition off the banking onto the flat to get the car anchored up and get it turned into turn number one because you have to brake and almost turn at the same time so you come off the bank try and stay straight and get the car braked in a straight line and at the moment both of them doing beautifully well the battle for the lead though is still as close as it was as well don't forget this is alan day at the wheel of the monster energy supported number 24 car the pk car sport car still hanging on to the lead of the race but was reeled him in over the course of the last few laps and the American is desperate now to try and grab the hold of the lead if he, at all he can the 21 year old hounding 
the number 24 car in the hands of Alan Day. Nothing doing as yet. The pair of them together, six laps completed. Still plenty of time for them to work out where the chink in the armour is. And I'm going to bring back in again Andre for this one. Uh, has a, as a man who's raced on uh, iRacing and uh, uh, knows a lot about NASCAR in general. NASCAR's, uh, th these particular cars, you know, standard setups for everybody. We're on the road course, so it, they're not the easiest things to, to tame and, and drive. It's a, a slightly longer race than the heats, Andre. Is it just a case of, at this stage, Andre Castro sitting behind the race leader and seeing if there's a chink in the armor for Alan Day and an opportunity? Yes, I think so. Um, consistent, cons consens consens consistency, consistency. Yep. Thank, thank you very much, man. Um, it's key in this race, and yeah. um, you also have to take a look a little bit on the tire wear because, of course, the tires fall down during a 30 minutes race. We, I think, we will now have no pit stops in this race, so maybe Andre Custer is just putting a little bit pressure on Alan Day and forcing him to wear his tires down. So maybe this is a strategy just put the pressure on the leading guy and let him drive that fast that the tires will fall off at the end of the race. And also I have to jump in for Jeffrey Rufin, sorry for that, but he's also a real racer in different categories. He has a lot of over racing experience in real life. He's not only a crew chief or something like this at Hendrix Motorsport. So we see that there's guys, team members who have plenty of experience racing by themselves and also being part of a team. So that's fantastic in my opinion. Here we go, Andre. Thank you for that. I, hadn't, uh, I wasn't aware of that. Here is Jeffrey. About again, apply still to Loris Hazemans. Uh, Andre, one other question I've got as well, and the, the circuit dynamics on iRacing also allow the circuit to rubber up as well, so no rubber on the circuit for the practice sessions. Then as we move through the heats, uh, more and more rubber gets laid down like in real life together. Yes, right, and the grip is increasing. Also, the weather is very important. Uh, the lower the temperature, you have a little bit more grip when the temperatures are higher, the grip will lose. So, yeah, it's different factors you have to take a look at. The tires, the damage on your car, the temperatures and so on. And these all factors will affect your driving style. Let's have a quick look at what happened to Sebastian Bleaky Molen. Nice and neat and tidy coming out of... She runs a little bit wide on the... See the damage to the front of his car and as Andre was just suggesting that will be affecting its handling and of course its uh, top end speed as well the weather forecast um, it, it's set there's only one weather slot so there's no variation in the weather but the temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit that's about 27 degrees Celsius partly cloudy three miles per hour wind and humidity set at the beginning uh, on the server at 53 percent humidity Alex Sedgwick over the start finish line now Eric Filgueras who was running in ninth place has just headed down pit road by the look of things so that's going to hoist everybody up through the order Bavo Fallon has got his hands rather full at this stage he is trying to hound the 199 car of Marcel Linertz that sits ahead of him see Marcel racing things like ADAP Formula 4 and Formula Renault and did do a you know, 24 hour in the past as well so he's doing a, a very good job he uh, was a former ADAP KF2 champion back in 2013 and uh, is uh, managing to hang on to the place ahead of the 311 PK Car Sport Chevy at this stage. They've also got Advite Diodar and Alex Fontana not far behind them as well. So that's another good little battle that is beginning to brew. Bravo Fallon is going to have a look at the West Horseshoe. No, not at all. Knew the door was going to close. Backed out of the move. And if anything, has perhaps just lost a little bit more time now. It's a black number 31 guard of Advite Diodar that sits behind. Eight laps completed and of a maximum of 20, 13, 14 minutes of the race gone. So we're almost at the half distance point now. And for most of these drivers, they still think that they have opportunities for them to work their way through the order. There's another battered car by the look of things. That's um, Ruben Garcia. The reigning Pinty's champion, double uh, Pinty's champion, looking to see whether he can thread his way through the order. In fact, treble Pinty's champion, of course, because it was 2015, 18 and 19 that he won the Pinty's championship. Marcel Lennert still under pressure from Babo Fallon in this great little fight that's going on for 11th and 12th positions, the pair of them. 
absolutely together. Babo Fallon, is he going to try something here? They're side by side, just about daylight between the pair of them, but he's going to be on the outside line as they head in towards the breaking area for turn number one. Can he get the job done? Not quite. He's still on the outside line, so it is still going to be... Marcel Lenertz hangs on to the place, but then Bavo finally gets a better run coming out of the corner. They bounce off each other side to side. The order is still the same. What a superb little battle. Gianluca, when you uh, first thought about um, working with everybody and pulling this E-Series together, did you think that it could possibly, in your wildest dreams, have gone as well as it has done this evening? I think I have to jump in here because I don't see Gianluca right now on the channel. So, yeah, I mean, Andre, then I'll, I'll pose the same question to you, and maybe it'll... it's been a, a, an amazing start. This is just the prologue. This carries no championship points. It all starts to get a bit more serious from here. Yes, right. And next week, every Tuesday in this championship, and we see a lot of tracks we know in the reality for the Nesco New Series. Next week, we have the Brand Satch Indie Circuit, a track we really visit with the Nesco New Series. As a season opener, I think there would be no better track. The home of the famous American Speed Fest, the very popular NASCAR Wheel New Series race. And then we start collecting points and we see already the drivers, they are giving their best. And when then there are points on the line, I think everything will heat up. I could have posed the same question to Jerome Galpin as well, if he's still around as well. Jerome, what, what a great start. Prologue event, no championship points, but some of the racing has been superb. Yeah, it was a, it was a bigger... It was a big jump in the unknown. where everybody can get used to, to the format. But, uh, you have to know that 70% uh, uh, of those guys. So we can be very, very happy with the, with the result. And, and clearly, you know, imagine what it can be on a, on a small uh, track like a Brave Dutch Indy. In real life, it's clearly one, uh, one of the highlights of the championship, so I'm sure in virtual it will be one of the virtual highlights of the championship too. I, I think Brands Hatch next weekend could be very, very interesting as well. It's usually called yeah. American Speed Fest. Are we going to call it E-Fest, are we, for next weekend? Exactly, and, uh, and we, can rely on, yeah, we can rely on our friends from MS join us there too. I'm sure. I'm sure they will as well, yeah. Tom Aaron and the marketing team at uh, Brands so race continuing to to wear on battle still raging out on circuits uh, out front still this good fight that's going on between alan day and andre castro and here it is that fight between the pair of them andre castro still looking for an opportunity but alan day is just making sure that he's driving consistently as he always does not making mistakes and therefore for andre castro he might close to within point two of a second but that's with getting the draft down the straight and then he's got to try and get the car anchored up and Alan Day is always so late on the brakes nailing the apexes and particularly coming off the corner getting off the corner quickly so as to really prevent Andre Castro getting too much in the toe the gap closing again you can see it's come down by another tenth of a second from this car here that we ride along the side of Andre Castro looking at the car ahead the Monster Energy Chevy in the hands of the Israeli the double former champion in the NASCAR Wheeling Euro Series in the NASCAR Pro Division, as it's called for this year. Alan Day having secured back-to-back -back championships, actually, 2017 and 2018. Under pressure from Andre Castro, the two of them absolutely bumper to bumper. Not a single mark on either of them as yet. It's been clean racing from both. And at the moment, well, they've got to still keep rolling their sleeves up to fight it out for what's it going to be about another 11 and a half minutes at this stage still together up towards the west horseshoe for the 11th time nice and neat and tidy coming out of the corner loris hazeman's in third place is still under pressure as well from the car that he had been doing battle with and has been all race as well which is jeffrey rufern but now andre castro has unlocked the door potentially to try and work his way through into the lead of the race Alan Day just a little bit wide coming out of turn six and turn seven. Can he get himself ahead? No, not quite. Great driving by Alan Day. Just manages to get across the nose of Andre Castro's car. Well, that was a, a glimmer, albeit a very small glimmer of hope there for Andre Castro. And Andre Vargard, who joins us uh, still in the virtual commentary box, we were talking about early on, is Castro sitting behind to see if there's a chink in the armor and a mistake from Alan Day? And we almost saw it there, didn't we? Yes, right. Alan Day is doing no mistakes and like I tried to say before, now I really want to say it, 
consistency is key. See, Mark, I can say the word. Uh, Alan Bay is doing zero mistakes. Andre Castro is trying to find his way through, but right now he has no possibility to overtake the 24 car, and that's because Alan Day just is on his best. And I think we're going to have a very, very nice third for a third part of this race because Alan Day and uh, Andre Castro have never seen such thrilling sim racing before. I have to be honest, it's one of the best battles I've seen in a simulation in my life. Yes. It's great, it's fantastic stuff. Absolutely love it at this stage. Here comes Eric Filgaras. Now remember, he bit road, not quite sure what the problem was. He's running in 16th, he's now gone up to 15th because he looks to try and work his way past Alessandro Brigatti, but that's going over the start-finish line. Brigatti will have the inside line when they get towards the braking area for the next corner. And Alessandro Brigatti has got Advait Dioda ahead of him, and Advait Dioda has Alex Fontana. So it's all rather close at the moment. 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, and you could argue 17th place, I think, as well, because Giorgio Maggi is at the tail end of this field, the runner-up in the Euro NASCAR 2 division last year. All right, that sorted us out all of a sudden there is contact and I think that was Advait Dioda that got together there with Alessandro Brigatti let's just see whether we can have a quick look at what happened there Brigatti is out there on his own so shouldn't have really have been under attack from Advait Dioda I just wondered whether Dioda missed his breaking point potentially here we go let's see whether we get a better view of it here we go uh, it's Alex Fontana was it Alex Fontana and yeah Advait Dioda just missed his breaking point apologies I thought that was Alessandro Brigatti so Fontana that got tagged around and that's now dropped uh, Alex Fontana down into 17th position as a result of that he could back up on the lead of the race with eight and a half minutes to go Alan Day still just 0.2 of a second up the road from Andre Castro Chevy's one and two at the moment the leading Ford is Hazemans who sits there in third position that's lap number 13 and out and well, for the moment, Alan Day has led every single one of those laps so far. Onto the brakes, up towards the East Horseshoe again. Got a quick replay. This is Stefan Cuisine at the wheel of the number 79 Hockenheim American Fan Fest car. So nothing doing there. We'll go back to. Oh, there he is. He's just had the spin. That would be down at the West Horseshoe where he had that spin. Rejoined the circuit just ahead of Simon Palate. So that puts Palate now up inside the top 20. And here's a car we've not seen a, a great deal of, which was Tobias Dallenhauer. We go back, actually, then. So now we're looking back at the fight for 12th and 13th positions. No, 11th and 12th positions, which is Marcel Linertz fighting away with Bavo Fallon. So most of the battles that have been together have been together for the whole race. They're just not spreading apart. We've still got this great fight for first and second place. Um, we've still got Hazemans and Riffin together for third and fourth. We've had Lenertz and Bavo Fallon together for a huge chunk of the race. And uh, if you actually look uh, on the left of your screens there, you've got a great fight going on for eighth position as well at this stage, which is uh, Tobias Dauenhauer fighting away with uh, Marine Kramers and Yuli Stelso is looking to try and join in on the mix as well. Car number 10 running in 10th position. But we go back on board with Andre Castro right behind the race leader. Great noise the cars make as they head around over the start finish line. Another lap completed and he's going for the inside line. Time. Uh, is he going to get the car anchored up in time or could Alan Day go back into the lead of the race? It's so difficult to break that late when you're heading up towards turn one and that's exactly what happened. Andre Castro threw it up the inside, had a nibble for the lead of the race, but Alan Day just let him do it, knowing that he was probably going to run out of tarmac a little bit as they headed through the latter part of turn number one, and that's exactly what happened. Castro couldn't get the car turned in in time, couldn't get it fully anchored up because he braked so late, and well, without too much resistance, Alan Day back through into the lead of the race, but we're now starting to get into a little bit more traffic than I would have thought before too much longer. Sebastian Bleaky Molen's rather battered car will be the next to move out of the way as we go back down through the order again looking at the number 83 car which is the Moss Autodrome backed car of Jakob Krafek for the lead of the race we'll have Sebastian Bleekemold Ford to deal with before too much longer in fact he's gone off the circuit by the look of things Sebastian Bleekemold and he's in the tyre wall at turn number 7 that looks like just as they head 
off the road course and up towards Speedway 1 in reality. And there's a problem as well. That's Babo Fallon who's been going so beautifully well. He's up. That is coming out of the East Horseshoe and up towards the King at turn number four by the look of things. So that is such a shame for him as to why he'd gone off because he was running so high up in the order there's the tail end of it just lost the back end of the car not sure whether it was contact that caused that but into the barriers and we will be able to rejoin but that has rather undone a lot of the hard work that he'd been doing here's 12th and 13th places together Alessandro Brigatti coming under pressure from Eric Filgueras who gets the toe moves one way moves the other moves his Chevy alongside and ahead so that's a place gained for Filgueras does beg the question as to what brought him into pit road midway through this race so he saw him heading down pit lane it must have been potentially some sort of penalty and then Brigatti gets very sideways but stop just manages to tidy it up that allows Advait Dioda and Giorgio Maggi to go through as well so three places lost on the one lap there for Alessandro Brigatti not the kind of lap that the Italian would have wanted the number 108 Feedvik racing car in the hands of the former FIA CIK kart racer losing positions there goes Phil Garris pass back past him on this replay that was heading up towards the bus stop so Eric Phil Garris with a clean pass in towards the bus stop now, what did Brigatti do wrong the car started to get away from him and he yeah, lost momentum coming out of the bus stop here we still see this fight that has been raging the whole race so far. Loris Hazeman's still under pressure from Jeffrey Rufin, but at the moment there's still half a second between the pair of them. Now we are getting towards the final five or so laps of the race. Alan Day still out front and leading from Andre Castro, and they're going to bring Jerome Galpin back in again. Uh, on we've seen many many drivers in Euro NASCAR over the years uh, Alan Day is uh, is one of the many that uh, that is a, a great ambassador isn't he for uh, for European NASCAR racing I have, I have to admit that uh, we are super super lucky with uh, with all our driver and and also our champions you know uh, our past champion of course Alan Day and Tony Kumpen and Der Villarino they, they did a wonderful job and, and let me tell you when we when we go to, to the to the NASCAR award ceremony at the Elliott they have this speech to, to, to give. It's also a challenging moment, as challenging as driving the car. And, and all of them, you know, Anthony on there and, uh, and Alan, of course, they are, they are great champions behind the wheel, but also in, a, in, in, in the real life and as a speaker, as a promoter of the series. So, so we, are, uh, we are really, really lucky with, uh, with all our drivers and our... And, and you look at, you know, we, we say that we're a family in Euro NASCAR, but the, but the wider family is Alex Sedgwick's uh, looking to try and gain a place on Ben Creener here. This would be for sixth and uh, fifth and sixth position. But we've got the wider family as well. You know, NASCAR is a, is a global brand. We know we've got the driver exchange program as, as well, uh, with the likes of Ruby Garcia Jr. coming to, to race with us. And of course, us sending drivers the likes of Loris Hazemans over to race in, in America. It's a, it's a, it's a, Euro NASCAR is a family, but we're part of something much bigger, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely, and, and don't forget our our friends from the USA. A lot of them are on uh, on YouTube or Facebook, and uh, and uh, we will have some of them coming to race in real life with us. Some others coming to to race uh, virtual in the future virtual events. So yeah, it's, it's a big worldwide family. Our friends from Enco or India or South America. So so it's a big uh, worldwide family, and uh, and. Um, that's super cool to be able to see, to see all these guys on track uh, uh, during a racing weekend and sharing the same passion for pro racing. So that's that's it, what it's all about. But I think we have a super nice battle for the for the lead at the moment, and uh, we can see as giving a, a really good show. Sorry, is, guys, yeah. I have to jump in right now because we missed a lead change. I saw it on a different screen. Uh, Alan Day made a slight mistake, and Andrew Custer went through just. All the information on how we had to be changed. Uh, right, yeah, we're just seeing on our screen now the two of them running absolutely side by side. Nothing showed up on our screen, as you say, but yeah, that uh, has uh, allowed Alan Day again to regather his efforts and get back through again. We didn't see the mistake. What we did see was uh, Castro and the shot went back to it uh, down in down or in the lead of the race, but Alan Day able to work his way back through into the lead. So Alan Day now reasserting himself back where he wants to be recovering from that mistake and that was right at, at the very end as well really isn't it because uh, the, the clock is 
ticking up all of the time. Ah, oh, right there is uh, Alan Day. Now, is that another mistake as well? That's a live mistake there, as I think uh, Andre Castro just tagged the tail end of the car there and got Alan Day out of shape. That will not make him overly happy, I wouldn't have thought. 1 minute 45.9 is best lap of the race that he's done so far. Of course, the previous lap with the mistake, and that one is going to compromise it, but Andre Castro now with... Uh, a little bit of contact, I think, between the front of his car and the back of Alan Day's has gone through for the second time to take up the lead of the race. So there's also been a change there as, because Alex Sedgwick now is ahead of Ben Creener uh, on this lap. And also, we have lost into the pit lane. Loris Hazeman is headed to the pit lane as well. So the number 50, Hendricks Ford, showing down, down now in 23rd position, having dropped down through the order. So I'm well, not quite sure what happened there exactly with... Loris Hazemans, but his car heading down the pit road for some reason. There's number 33, Ben Creener, now behind Alex Sedgwick, but still bizarrely in fifth place with Hazemans having headed to the pit road. But he needs to watch his mirrors now because Brian Cruels is right behind him. And Brian is another one of those drivers who is uh, running kind of a 300 team member. Andre Castro will take the win as we get to the 20 minutes before races up and, and a bump there from Alan Day. I don't think he was overly happy with what happened on the final lap. So he takes the checkered flag, finishes the race in second position. Andre Castro is celebrating in traditional style, but I think what Alan Day did there after the checkered flag, albeit virtually, probably shows that he wasn't happy with what happened in the braking area up towards the West Horseshoe on the final lap where Castro just tagged the tail end of his car and lost him the lead of the race. So Castro will head towards victory lane remember no championship points for this one the rest of the cars feeding over the start finish line now through comes alex fontana who finishes in 14th place chasing all the way to the line i think yoda but didn't quite make it in the end and Barbo fallon who Barbo fallon who had that issue and went into the tire barrier finishing in 15th place in the end but um, rather interesting race uh, towards the end there particularly the battle that had been clean all race between uh, Andre Castro and Alan Day just with the mistake from Alan Day that we didn't see on camera the first mistake but then we saw the the second batch of contract between Castro and Day that uh, ultimately uh, changed the order round so that is uh, the first of our Euro NASCAR esports series races done and dusted the highlight race in this prologue event in conjunction of course with iRacing and supported from i-cin.com and sim racing tv we're hoping we're going to be able to have some interviews with our drivers who are going to be heading towards our virtual victory lane and for the moment they will come and join me in live commentary but i just want to pick up perhaps uh, a few points with jerome galpin and andre and Jim lucas showing online as well at the moment so maybe your thoughts to start with uh, uh, jerome galpin first night of racing prologue something to highlight to the championship and well, it certainly seems as though we have um, we have done exactly that yeah exactly it's super exciting entertaining super proud of the of the guys they did uh, they did they usually do in uh, in real life so so it, i'm super super happy with uh with the it was a uh, it was really entertaining and a good pace so uh, congratulations to everybody good job guys thanks jerome yeah confirmation of the results uh, andre castro claims the win from place and jeffrey rufin in third alex sedgwick ben creener and brian cruels complete the top six uh, tobias diane Hauer finishes in seventh place uh, marine kramers is in eighth place at least also ninth and eric phil garras despite a pit a trip to the pit lane finishes in 10th position. Marcel Lennertz is 11th ahead of Giorgio Maggi, Advait Gioda and Alex Fontana. Bravo Fallon with his problems, but still finished in 15th place uh, with uh, Stefano Gustafaye uh, completing the top 16. In 17th place was uh, Alessandro Bugatti, who finished in 17th place. 18th goes the way of Stinis Longin in the end. Simon Palate was in 19th, 20th position. That is where we see the number 83 car of uh, Jakob uh, Krafek in 20th position. Alain Moscron, Stefan Krasin, Scott Jess, Ruben Garcia, Loris Hazemans, Francesco Garisto, and Romain Inietta completes the top 27. And that uh, is uh, the top 27 cars done and dusted. Uh, I'm going to bring in uh, also uh, our uh, uh, race uh, co commentator, uh, Andre, to have a, a quick few words as well, Andre. Andre, um, great start to our E series. Yes, right. Um, I think racing, especially sim racing, is all about entertainment. 
and I enjoyed that race, so everything was fine for me. For the last lap incident, I bet the NASCAR fans will say it was a normal bump and run. I think the guys who are more into European racing say it was a little bit unclean. In the end, I'm not the race control. I will not judge it, but um, <laughs> yeah, in the end, it was this typical dramatic finish of a race we all want to see. It was great, was it? One of the drivers that might have a view joins me in the virtual commentary box, Alan Day, who led most of the race, Alan. We didn't quite see initially how you lost the lead. You retook the lead again, and there was a little bit of contact down at the West Horseshoe. Yeah, I think it was a good race. Uh, it was a good fight with uh, with Andre. Um, he gave me the bump and run so, <laughs> so aggressively. <laughs> So I, I had such a clean uh, fight with him. Uh, shame it ended like that with a bump and run. It's ain't over. That's what I can say. Uh, but it was it was fun. It was good. And and it's a great way. You know, we, we can't go racing for real at the moment. That that day will come when when the time is right. But for the moment, it it keeps you guys busy. And I know you do, you do a lot of of simulator training anyway, don't you? Yeah, that's like uh, the normal daily routine, even in the season, um, especially in iRacing. I spend quite quite a lot of time in iRacing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a daily practice for me, even in the normal normal times. Well, thanks for keeping us entertained, Alan. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you next weekend at Brandsatch on the Indy Circuit. Give us your thoughts. Um, yeah, Brandsatch, I love it. Uh, I love it. Uh, and it should be fun. Uh, I know that uh, Andre is quick as hell also there. We raced there before. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but he's uh, he's a rocket. He's so, so quick. Um, but yeah, I will train as hard as I can to to try and beat him. Uh, well, well, well done the on bump, the podium. Without the bump and run. <laughs> without the bump and run. Yeah, well done on the podium. Well done to me today. There's Alan Day. Thank, Let, thank you Let's catch up with... Thank you. Thanks, Alan. We'll catch you up for so Let's catch up with the race winner, Andre Castro. Uh, Andre, welcome to the commentary box. Alan said um, that was one heck of a bump and run you gave him. It was. It was. I, I got on up to that one. Um, and it was, it was such a good race uh, up until that point. And um, we just kept trading the lead. And I just I messed up once I finally got in. He got back down into me into turn one. And then um, down into, I guess, the horseshoe... I turned three or four. He uh, he was breaking really really early the whole time and uh, the, the entire race. So uh, I figured I would maybe try to give him a little bump and and uh, scoot on by, and and that's what happened. Um, I think honestly it was a bit of a bigger bump just because of the lag a little bit, but um, but yeah, um, definitely something I I expect to get in return in the future if it comes down to it. You know, on the final lap, <laughs> Don't worry. I get yeah, it. I I know get, get it. it. Yeah, I'm so, joking. Um, Congrats, but, by the uh, way. Yeah, yeah, thanks. It was it was a really fun race, and um, yeah. I I didn't expect us to be like that close the entire time, just like you know bumper to I bumper. I thought you were gonna take off immediately after the start. I was surprised that I was managed to hold you. I was. Yeah, we we both had really good pace, and then um, you are so thought, quick. It's un yeah, I just I wasn't sure who was gonna be the one that had the better pace, but then we ended up having the same exact pace. So it was like I don't know, must have been a really fun race to watch. But um, what? yeah, it was, it was for, a great race to watch. You you couldn't see some of the battles behind you guys as well. It was. Fun question was was there much tire drop off yeah there was a lot there's like what three or four seconds on some something like that um it was it was pretty insane but it was just about managing the tires and at the end you could see alon and i were struggling a little bit just slipping and sliding and stuff but um yeah it was it was a really fun race thanks to, to df1 and to, to all you guys for putting this on i had a really good time and um man just just glad to put on a good show for everybody and, and i'm guessing guys championship points next weekend and becomes even more serious doesn't it yeah, yeah, I think it becomes. Uh, I mean, I think we treated it pretty seriously today. I mean, it, we were going at it and, um, you know, giving it the best we could. So it'll it be the same next week, just doing the best we can, and maybe obviously be a little bit more conservative to make sure you know you don't make a mistake and lose points. But um, I think overall, it'll just be the same. You know, we're always trying to win out there, and um, we're not we're not coming to finish in second. So that's what we're going to try to do next week too. Entirely different circuit, Andre. Next weekend, though, you know, from from the the, the Daytona International Speedway road course to to Brands Hatch Indy Circuit, chalk and cheese. Yeah, it's it's pretty different. Um, but uh, we, me and Alon both got a practice race there a couple weeks ago with the um with the Arca cars, the Canon cars, and um, it, it races pretty well. It's just it's almost like a short track. Uh, if you if you think of this as a super speedway, that's kind of like a short track, and you can 
you can tell already from our races that we have in real life just how good of a show uh, you can put on there. So, um, yeah, really excited to go next week and, and see what we got. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for keeping us entertained. Uh, Andre, the ever Euro NASCAR eSports series race in conjunction with iRacing with support from i-cin.com and Sim Racing League TV. He will now um, virtually, I would say, at this stage, be uh, be grabbing his TJ Titanium Ring uh, as the winner for that race. But of course, it is just virtual. It will be the champion at the end of the series that will pick up the main ring. But well done to Andre Castro and Alan Day for keeping us entertained. I was hoping we might be able to hear from Jeffrey Ruthven as well, who'd had a great race for Hendrix Motorsport, but he's not dropped in to the at the commentary box so uh, so thank you alan and andre they can sort of leave our virtual commentary box now um, i want to bring in one more person perhaps for a for a, for a quick chat before we sign things off and that is perhaps uh, gian luca again who has um, um, put in many many hours to, uh, to 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 organize all of this and is is like a like a school teacher having to herd racing drivers to, to get them to do what you want to do and they've done it beautifully well this evening john must, you must be hugely proud and very pleased yes you got it I'm, I definitely am, and it was really incredible to see them, to see this championship uh, take life in the, in the past few weeks. So we worked so much, everyone, every one of you guys worked so hard to do this, to do this and well, we got a very deserving finish. <laughs> Man, you racing, guys. It, it was good. I, I quite liked it, the fact that they were there, they were lighthearted and giggling about it Be, because it is e racing. It's still serious. They still want to win, but um, yeah. yeah, there's there's no consequence uh, in in that respect. Had that have been real racing, Alan Day might not sound so happy and so jovial. Well, I, I I only tell you that they are in a separate conference room now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. Uh, Thank you so much, everybody. It was fantastic. It, it was great. Thanks, guys. So, uh, so I suppose that, that that about wraps things up uh, from here. Don't forget, though, this is a weekly thing now. So, um, this is uh, just prologue events that we've had today. So we will be starting the main championship next week uh, on the 28th of uh, April. Uh, same time again. So if you're watching in the UK, the broadcast starts at uh, 1900 hours. If you're watching Central European summertime, it's uh, uh, eight o'clock in the evening. And if you're watching Eastern Daylight Saving Time, as it is now in the US, it will be two o'clock in the afternoon. So Brands Hatch next weekend. The week after we head to Watkins Glen before we move to Sanborn in Indi Indianapolis for the main championship season. The semi final we go back to Brands Hatch in late May on the Grand Prix circuit. Early June, Charlotte Roval, and we will head towards Zolder for the championship finals on the 9th of June. But that's all from a virtual Daytona. Thanks for joining us for the first ever Euro NASCAR Esports Series race. From the whole team here, myself, Mark Werrell, we'll see you again at Brands Hatch next week. Until then, goodbye. Bye, guys.